Yeah. Head balder than an eagle, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm taking after you. <laughs> oh yeah, I, you should, I you went should to, ball too. I I am. I went to the barber. I said, "Give me the Virgil." No shit. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a sweet haircut. Awesome. Yeah, man. Right. I'm cool. I'm cool with it. We used to do afternoon shows in Erie as the, as the convention center right there. Yeah. Afternoon show and an evening show in Pittsburgh. Oh wow! That's, so you have you have your show here, and then you drive two hours and have another show. Yeah. Or sometimes okay. we did this. We 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 fly into Erie. No, we fly into um, Cleveland. Okay. An afternoon show in Erie, an evening show in Cleveland. Wow, that's probably yeah. a little draining. Oh, it could be, but hey, Vincent, give a damn. Yeah, no, he just wanted money. He, yeah, what? he wanted money, and you better show up. <laughs> Absolutely. Hurt or not. Oh, yeah. Hurt or not. Vince said, you have your ass there. You mean? <laughs> yeah, he's a businessman. Oh, he he was strictly a businessman, man. man. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And it was so cool, man, because Monsoon was living then. My my real good friend was Joey Morella. Remember the referee? Yeah, he passed away in that car accident. Yeah. Car Terrible. accident. Uh huh. Gorilla, gorilla's son. Yeah, gorilla, that was a Monsoon's son. Yeah. That's one of my real good friends, man. I mean, I, uh, man, I remember so I, was on, I was on the West Coast, and they said, WWF wrestling superstar gets killed. And I kept I kept the line on, you mean, like the television on. Yeah. And it said, Joey Morella. Wow. You weren't expecting it to be him, I'm sure. You're probably thinking, no. which one of the guys? No, I never thought. Because he was down in round, like, bound by Atlantic City, you know what I mean? And we, we were running like three crews, A team, B team, C team. Okay. A team went around the world. Okay. So yeah. we were we were up in, in LA. Okay. Cause me and Ted was together. You know what I mean? Me, Ted, Andre in the corner, we went against Hogan and we went against Hogan and Savage okay. and Piper in their corner. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. I it, wow. it really hurt me, man. I remember I was at that. Joey's Joey's funeral and Monsoon cried right on my shoulder, man. Oh my goodness. I can still remember like it was yesterday, man. Tragic. Yeah, I'm sure that's terrible for everybody, let alone Gorilla Monsoon losing his son in that car accident. Yeah. He and Joey, a, a tree came right through the windshield, okay? And took his hair completely off. Are you kidding me? I didn't know that happened. Okay. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, I, I got the whole nine nine yards of it, man. And then, oh, wow. then he hit he hit. Remember Harvey Whippleman? That's who was driving, if I'm not mistaken. The manager. He was he was riding alongside Joey. Okay. Joey was probably tired. Okay, and that's why he went off the road. Wow. So Joey was driving. Harvey was riding passenger seat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He he was on a passenger. Oh my goodness. And usually when me and Joey ride together, I do all the driving, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, because wow. I I wasn't getting drunk and getting high and all this other bullshit, you mean? Mm -hmm. I, I was ready to drive and go, you mean? Of course. Go to make some more money. Yeah. Because when me and Ted was together, it was we were limo 24-7, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to sell all 20 grand at ringside, at, I mean, at ringside every match. Wow. I had to go to Monsoon and get 20 grand and $100 bills. And we threw it out like it was nothing. Man, you ought to see the women that had a uh, million dollar man on one titty, Virgil on the other <laughs> titty. Okay. Oh, wow. Lift up their dress, Virgil on one cheek, or, uh, one, one side of her ass, million dollar man on the other side. And one girl even lifted her legs way up in the air. He was shaved and said, Virgil on the top of her. Million dollar man on the bottom of it. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Did you ever have like regulars? Like, like, okay, I'm going to Erie. I'm going to Pittsburgh. I want to run into so and so. Oh man, you 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 had you had regular women that were there, okay, mm -hmm. waiting for you. Did you have okay. a favorite? Maybe you might be looking for, or if you go to a certain city, I'm looking for so and so. No, I'm only one I looked for like that. Um, uh, I had a real cute little motherfucker up in, in Toronto, okay? okay? 
and her name was Delia. She's fine, motherfucker. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. And we'd go to Toronto, okay? Bingo, bango, she'd be right there waiting. Wow. Uh, waiting for me. And then we we flew all our, I had a Hawaiian chick, okay? Okay. We used to do like um, Seattle or we did LA or we did San Diego or we even did Vegas, okay? We fly right from there to um, Honolulu, Hawaii. Okay, wow. Hawaii, yeah. And when we come back, usually sometimes we go, we say we go from Hawaii mm -hmm. and we're flying all the way to Tokyo, Japan. Yeah. We make, we make a stop in you know, Guam, the island of Guam. Okay. We used to make a stop in Guam because Vince, Vince was real cool with the mayor of Guam. And of course he was. We did we did a show right there, you know what I mean? You fly out the next you fly out early the next morning on your way to Tokyo. Holy cow. Yeah. Were you single at the time? Oh, I'm I'm, I'm still single. Okay. You're never married? Never married. Never married, man. Never no kids that you know of that or anything? Oh, none. Zero. Okay. I kept I kept that penis double wrapped. <laughs> Very nice. You wasn't gonna lock, get me like like the guys just getting blamed for like it's all over the world. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like man, uh, sometimes they they serve your papers. They come right up to you and serve you. You know what I mean? Oh wow! Oh, I've seen a lot of guys getting getting served with papers. You know what I mean like uh, say uh, this kid say it was it was your kid. You know what I mean? Wow! And that you know what I mean? Yeah. Can you give me an example of a wrestler that got served with papers and oh by the way you have a surprise kid? I'm trying to think uh, who got who got served with papers. The only one I know who got maybe like when I seen it, he was like maybe right before me going in the building was Rick Rude, but it wasn't from knocking no chick up. Okay. Okay. Rude was probably like he was. Um, it was in a bar or something like that, and. The cops are getting trying to get him because for being drunk coming out the bar. Okay. Okay. That happened to Root right there. I think we were like um, in San Francisco. Okay. And bars right down, and we flew in the set, set, uh, Frisco pretty early. You know I me mean? and and the in the in the show there was at eight o'clock at night. Okay. Okay. He must have did Root must have did something there. You know I mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know, was it uh, illegal parking or something like that? You mean? Because they get real moody in Frisco. You mean? Okay. Uh, like downtown, like from the arena to go downtown San Francisco, it's like about, about 18 miles. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because the, the arena was more out toward the airport. Yeah. In, Francisco. It wasn't downtown San Francisco. You brought up Rick Rude. He has a reputation of being one of the tougher guys in that era. Did you ever see him get into a fight or anybody try to test him? Uh, Rude? <clears throat> yeah. I never, I never ever seen no one. Who, who really tried to want to test Rude one time? I'm trying to think. I never seen no one in a bar that wanted to okay. get that. Okay. And like in wrestling, okay, you might like we might have a match. They may like try to come with that action, like they want to to test okay. it, test them. You know what I mean? But that was all in the wrestling match, okay? Okay. I never seen no one like actually. We're like we're at we're like in Atlanta or in uh, Minneapolis or we're in okay. San Francisco or we're in. Um, New Orleans or Chicago that who really wants to test rude, you mean? Okay, sure. I, I never seen it, man. So we're in your prime and we're in Rick Rude's prime. Who scored more chicks? You or Rick Rude? Uh we're we were pretty close, man. Because what, okay. what 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 women what the one thing about me, um we me and Rude was both ripped up. We were big two mm -hmm. big motherfuckers too, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um the one thing about me, I was throwing off that money, okay? <laughs> Those $100 bills? Yes, indeed. I was throwing off them $100 bills. And people love that money. 
Okay? Because people have my name on their titties, on their ass. Okay? <laughs> okay. So you just went to a bar randomly. Then a girl would just show you her chest and it would say Virgil on it. Is that what you're saying? Hey, the, the, you know what I really call? What, what's your name again, man? Nick. Hey, hey Nick. Yes. Why well, well, I seen this at? I seen it in the airports. Wow. It, of course. You know, I, I fall in the airport. I make sure me and Ted is up like like three hours before the flight takes off. Okay. Okay. So you're taking your shower, you're washing up, okay? Bingo. Right to the airport. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're at the airport two hours before the flight takes off. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. And then you see in the airport waiting for you and okay when you're flying from say maybe san francisco to chicago okay you get in chicago women are waiting right in that airport in chicago okay so okay. help me understand where exactly would you go to have some fun with a girl at an airport you don't have no fun at a girl at an airport what they're oh, trying okay. to do okay what nick what what they do is you, you're you're flying to a city, okay? Sure. Okay. They're waiting that for you at the hotel where you got to go in. Because me and Ted, we always, we always stayed at the Marriott Hotels. Okay. That was our, our main hotel. We stayed at all around the world at the Marriott. Okay. Ted had his suite. I had my own suite. Okay. Couldn't beat that, man. And then girls, they used to hang right in the lobby waiting for you because wow. what they did man they thought they thought they're gonna get money okay huh. yeah because like man look i remember i remember these girls just come to these different arenas all over the world mm -hmm. and i should push four grand three grand down their breasts a thousand dollars down between their titties okay one girl show they show they ass me and his name on their ass I stick right, right in their, right in their, right between their legs. I stick a grand right up in there. Wow. Yeah. Cause I had to go to Monsoon and get 20,000 off them every match. And we threw okay. it up to the people in the arenas. You mean? Yeah, this is just Vince McMahon's money because you had to have that budget to play that character, correct? It wasn't yeah. yours or Ted's, of course. It, it, yeah. Me and Ted, we had that, the whole, the same character. We just throw off that money every match. So you have all these ladies. I mean, does it get overwhelming? Maybe you just want to relax one night or you just want to go to the airport and just focus on getting from point A to point B. Does it get overwhelming? You always have these lovely women throw themselves at you? Oh, man. I, I, but sometimes I should be just in my room and having four or five chicks just massaging me. Wow. What are you going to do? You just <laughs> let it all hang out, right? Crazy times, my goodness. Oh, man. It was... It was great times, man. Great times. Great. How can you how can you pass it up, man? Look you at that mean? smile. Oh yeah, it brings back good memories, apparently. Yeah, it brings back a lot of memories, man. Look, I mean, like we we were like on the road like this. Uh twenty, I think twenty days on the road or twenty one days on the road. Mm -hmm. And then you're off five days, okay? okay? And then you're back out again for twenty one more days. Sure. Yeah. I remember sometimes, man. I said, do like this, Nick. I said, stay over in England. Okay. 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 Cause sometimes uh, uh, you finish a tour, say I finish a tour. I finish the tour in London. Okay. And you're taught, you're taught, you're, you're starting back to the next tour in uh, Ireland, like okay. Dublin, Dublin, Ireland. So I get a, I get a, I get a ticket going from London to Dublin, Ireland, okay? Sure. And then I keep my ticket where it's first class flying all the way back from Pittsburgh to London. Wow. And then you change cool. planes and you, you go on to Ireland. So I get a, I get a, a, I get a cheap ticket going from, from um, uh, London to Ireland. Okay. I'm right wow. there on time waiting for the match. You yep. know? Yeah. So you're talking about all this fun you had with women. You, of course, were traveling with Ted DiBiase. Now, it was heavily brought up on his documentary how he had committed adultery, how it affected his son and his family and all that at the same time you, he was with you. Um, 
I mean, like, did you ever see his documentary? The, no, I, I didn't. I didn't know okay. what. I didn't really know what Ted really did, but like, what he did was his business. You know what I mean, Nick? So you kind of kept yourself, okay? I, I just kept my own thing to myself, okay? Mm-hmm. I I would not. I wasn't let no one ever fuck with Ted, okay? Sure. Okay, me and Ted was cool like that. I wasn't gonna let of no course. one fuck with him, but whatever he did was his business, okay? Mm-hmm. And if I seen like, I made sure that. He always got back to his room that night, okay? Okay. Sometimes I had to come in and maybe find him at a place where we were ready at that. Because, like, he, he drank, and I never drank in my life, okay? Good for you, by the way. In, in my house, man, tea and coffee was not even allowed. Wow. Yeah, my father didn't play that, man. My old man was beginning in the Navy SEALs, you know what I mean? They sure. were called frogmen. And my two older brothers, see, I had a brother, my older brother, Donald, was 26 when I was born. Oh, wow. Okay. And my brother, Warren, was 25 when I was born. Interesting. So when my old man, when he had me, he was 59. My mother was 49. Okay. Jeez. They, they was trying to make a baby girl. Okay. And not came Virgil. Yeah. They had a 19-pound, 12-ounce boy. Me. You were you were you were nineteen. Yep. Nineteen Come, pounds. Are you kidding me? You know, coming out the pussy, I was like a chair. Like, a, did you have those guns that you had in the eighties and nineties or something? Is that why you weighed so much? I don't know, man. Like, um, my little, my, uh, I had, I had, I had nice little little guns as a baby. Okay, I was a big <laughs> ass baby coming out of the pussy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was. I, I mean, my mother told me, um, and more man, I was nineteen pounds. I said, "Holy Dude, shit!" You I, gotta I mean, be kidding me. Yeah, my old man had me had me banging iron, man. Like he died my senior, he died my senior year in high school. Okay. Oh, jeez. And he had me Terrible. banging iron. I used to go to the gym with him, man. Like from uh, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade. He he died my you know, I was in eleventh grade. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then both my brothers there, man. Like they bang, they like banging that iron. Okay. Okay. So I just it just. I fell right into the whole action of it, Nick. You know what I mean? Yeah, you obviously had that incredible physique. I mean, what type of workout program were you on? Oh, brother, I was just I'm hitting everything. I was, I was hitting like this, Nick. I, I, I used to have a little, a little. I got. Let me see if I got one in, in with me right now. Okay. Let me, see if, let me see if I can find it. Oh, I do got one. Okay. And Nick, can you see this thing in my hand right here? Um, I can't see your hand, but I. There we okay. go. Okay. Yes, I can you see, see it. it right here. Yes, it's sir. A little, Okay, I got my rest I do on it, it goes anywhere from from uh five seconds to thirty seconds. And see okay. you hear you hear this, Nick. Look, it's ticking right now. Look. You may see it, you may see it moving. I do, right I do, I see it, yes. Okay. And then when it gets to thirty seconds, you hear you hear like a little beeping sound. Okay. And still still today, Nick, like I'm like I'm in in, in, in my room right here. And you can see, I got like, uh, I got a little. Like, look, listen, listen to this. You can hear beeping. Watch. Hear that? I definitely do. Okay, yeah. And then you place it back, and you you, you get ready to start up. Uh, the next set. So you would do whatever, say they're curls or push-ups. Thirty seconds, it goes off, and it's almost like a circuit training. Oh yeah, I mean you go you go dumbbell curls. Um, kickbacks. Um, um, uh, um, you got your know, dumbbell curls, straight bar curls, uh, the crooked bar curls. Okay, you go flat bench. You know what I mean? Okay. You can you can do it right. You can do it right here. Cause I I got one here. Look look. You see you see this one right down like this. Look. Okay. Can you see it? Like right here. I see a fan. Is there? Is, Oh, there we go. Yep, yep, I see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. You mean I still I still do it today. Okay. Okay. Today I still I still rock rock the iron all the time. I mean, I'm gonna do it to to uh Nick to I just drop drop dead. I was gonna be in that gym. Yeah. Your own gym. Yeah. My own, right. Okay, yeah. you look you can you can work out, Nick, you can work out anytime, okay? You may sometimes you can't you can't sleep at night. You get up at 
one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Start getting some dumbbell curls in, kickbacks in, you may. Okay. Um, uh, hitting your triceps with it, you may. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, you want to try to keep yourself going and going. I get up every, I try to get up every morning and I try to run a mile and run a mile back. You know? How fast do you run a mile? I, I, really, I really never got time in it. You mean? Okay. But you can just, you, know, you, you put a, a pair, like, pair, like, you can put sneakers on. But sometimes I run, I'm running like um, heavy type, like boots. Like, I got one right here, Nick. Look. This type of thing. See okay. that? You run a mile in that. Yeah. Are running shoes not available for you or? Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I have, I have like um, different, all kind of Under Armour shit. You mean? Okay. Because I, I used to be doing, I did, I, I did before, like with the WWF, I had a commercial with Under Armour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you mean like, I, I still got a bunch of Under Armour shit now. You mean? Okay. Uh, um, uh, sweatshirts, all kinds of sweatshirts, uh, different, different pants like this. I got, I got a pair of Under Armour on right here. Look, Nick. You Still might, endorsing them. You, you might see the Under Armour, the Under Armour sign right here. Look. Okay, I can. Yeah. You can see it. Still repping. All right, Virgil, let's put you on the spot. Are you the best bodyguard of all time? I think I'm, if not the best, one of the best. Who else would we even put in your league? I'm going off the top of my head. <laughs> I don't know. You probably can find a real bodyguard, like <laughs> maybe maybe over in England somewhere. You mean? Okay. And put us nice. on the on, on the dual thing, or find one in Ireland, or find one in Moscow, Russia, or find one okay. in, in um, Paris, France, or um, Rome, Italy. You mean? Okay. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I was one of the best. Definitely. Not, Who was better? Yeah, if, if not the best. Okay. Mm-hmm. If there's a bodyguard wing for the Hall of Fame, you'd have to be the first inductee. I mean, oh yeah, it got it got it got to come up eventually. That's why I look at it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I guess uh, whenever whenever everybody put me in the Hall of Fame, you mean? Do you think you're going to get that sooner or later? Oh, uh, eventually, probably. You mean? Yeah. I mean, you're still on what, good terms with the WWE. Yeah. What would be more exciting? Okay, Ted inducted me into the Hall of Fame. I'd be pumped. Yeah. People will still remember us. You mean? Oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely. And they still remember us right now. I, I have got I I you know when I go to the airports, Nick, still still today. I'm talking my first WrestleMania was um April tenth, nineteen eighty eight. Wow. That was thirty two years ago. And they still remember us like it was yesterday. Not to mention, you're undefeated at WrestleManias. Yeah. Nice. I, I still rocked at WrestleMania, didn't I? You definitely did. Yeah, man. Rocked it all the way down to the to the ground, man. Huh. So you're one of the best bodyguards of all time, probably the best. Now, early on in WWF, WWE, were you uh-huh. disappointed that you didn't get to wrestle more, or were you perfectly content in your role being Teddy Biasi's bodyguard? Um. I um, uh, I was more more concentrated on being being the best bodyguard ever. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. If someone wanted to jump off the stands, I I teach them a lesson. Okay. Okay. Someone comes outside the ring, and they're having a match in the ring. They kind of try to come out on Ted. I try to make the best bodyguard ever. You mean? For sure. Okay. Okay, you want you want you want to have a match when you have a straight up match, not kind of sneaking, smash them from the back and all the other stuff. You mean, or uh, a couple guys trying to slide in the ring on them. You mean? Did you ever have to put a fan in the Million Dollar Dream? Uh, I gave I gave a fan a nice uh, a nice drop kick. I drop kicked his ass right into the seats. Outside of the ring, you give him a drop kick and put him right back over the gate, the ring. Right. Right back, right back over, over the thing, you know, where the, 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 the bar, gate. the bar, yeah. the, the gate or the bar, whatever you want to call it, right yeah. over that gate, right back into the seats. Uh-huh. 
Amen. What would Vince McMahon tell you about a situation like that? Was it, hey, if a fan comes over the gate, it's open season, or do you tell you kind of use caution? No, no. Vince never said nothing about it, okay? But when he seen it happen, he said, I, I kind of like that, you mean? He said, yeah. you, show, you, show the per you show the person you wasn't taking no shit, <laughs> okay? And, and, and people fell with that because not too many people tried it. You know, you know what I'm talking about, Nick? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. How many, how many guys tried to come over that, 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 that thing and try to grab Ted when I was there? I can't recall a time where they got past you. Uh -huh. I never, I never re recalled it when they got by past me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was just waiting for that action, man. You know what I mean? For sure. Mm -hmm. so why did you go for the drop kick immediately with a fan? You didn't want to tackle them or just try to shove them off? One one guy, man, I um, I uh, I dropped I dropped right in his right in his ribs. I, okay. I, I caught him with a left hook right in his ribs. Okay. I'm gonna crack one. You mean? This is before Roddy Piper teaching you how to fight, right? Yeah, we're okay. Piper. P Piper tried to come in like he said he was my trainer type thing. You mean? Yeah. Brother, I came. I came from a rug. I came from a rugged ass family, rumble in the jungle. You mean? Okay. Okay. I came from baby. I mean, I was I was son of the Navy SEALs. You type of thing. You mean? Both so my brother's an incredible talent, but he doesn't get credit for teaching you how to fight. You already knew that beforehand. Oh yeah, I knew it. I knew it before it beforehand, man. Beforehand, I knew how to rumble in the jungle beforehand. You mean? Okay. Now you have to. Rumble now, where time is being uh, uh, a type of thing. You mean mm -hmm. time where you uh, got uh, what seventeen matches? I mean seventeen minutes for a match, or sixteen minutes for a match. You mean okay? And then you have to learn where you can't hit a guy in his ribs, or drop a right hook on him, or take a leg down, take him down, and and break his whole fe and break his whole femur. You mean sure. You know what what can you tell me about Roddy Piper? Oh, Pipe Piper's a good guy, man. Smooth guy. You mean? Uh, he, he's a real cool guy, man. Definitely. Oh yeah, Piper, man. I a lot of them guys are all like gone, man. You mean? Tragic, and it really it, is. Yeah, it, it, it's it's something else when you you used to you used to seeing them. You know, like you go like to you ever come to um the different comic cons they have. I have. I've yep. been to a couple. Yes. You've been to a couple of them, right? Yep. And you see, like a lot of guys doing signings there. You see, mm -hmm. you see Pipe Piper there. You see Rude there. You used to see um, Taker Taker's um, uh, manager. You remember um, Paul, Paul Bear? Bear? Yeah. yeah. You used to see like um, um, Earthquake there. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I looked on some. I looked on a picture. We were on the front cover of Sports Illustrated, 1993. Okay. Hooked on there, man. Um, got Macho Man there. He's gone. They had Paul Bear there. He's gone. Lost him, yeah. yeah. Um, earthquake. Yeah, we lost he, Earthquake. I think it was 2003 or four to cancer, unfortunately. I was a big Earthquake fan as well. Yeah. I mean, like, guys are like, they're checking out, like, you you see it like when you watch when you watch the WW, um, you know, the W. And it it comes on Monday night and it comes on Friday night. Yeah, I think the WWE uh, is coming on. Probably it comes on at eight 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 p.m. on Friday. The SmackDown. For SmackDown, yeah, yeah, SmackDown thing. Okay, yeah. on on Monday night at eight p.m. Uh, raw comes on. I can Three hear. It on, I, I can hear it on right now. I can hear it right now. They're coming. It's coming on right now. Oh, SmackDown. Okay. Yeah, brother. Sure. We have man, like we used to rock. We used to rock that goddamn Raw, man. You know? I bet you did. Yeah. And SummerSlam 1991, you became the Million Dollar Champion. How was that? It was great, man. It was great, man. It was great. The best feeling you could ever have in your life, man. 
You is that one of the highlights of your career, or is it the highlight of your career? Would you say? I think it's one of them, because I you you left right from the from being the um, million dollar man sidekick mm-hmm. for his bodyguard to being the million dollar man. Okay, went right there, and then you you jump from um, me and Ted right to now we're in WCW doing mm-hmm. the NWO, the New World Order. You oh, know? yeah. Rocking was, the NWO Cup from my man Virgil Vincent at the time. Yeah, you got you got the whole cup right there, don't you? Yes, sir. Got it for you. The NWO, right. We went from one great gimmick to another great gimmick. Okay? Definitely. You work. You went from like throwing out a uh, hundred dollar bills to rocking that NWO. Cause look, we had the original six members: was Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Ted DiBiase, myself. Excuse me, X Pac. X Pac. Yeah, six, six at the time. Yeah. X, I mean, six pack or whatever. They were yeah, he's, he's X Pac in WWE. They called him six because he was a six member in uh, WCW yeah. and WO. Right, in WO. I mean, I think Ted only had a contract maybe for like two years, I think. Okay. Because he, he left he left the NWO after like about two years, remember? Yeah. 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 And we rolled that, man. We rolled that whole NWO thing for like about three years before they. They really just, just like had everyone coming in. You mean you had Elizabeth yeah. in there? You, you had a whole like, like you had even Lex Luger in there. Remember that? Yeah, that almost seemed like it didn't fit when he was the Wolfpack NWO no. version of it. So is that yeah. the downfall of the NWO? Would you say they add too many people to it? Yeah, I mean, like it, it wasn't like back when we first started. You mean like even when when Ted even jap, jumped out. He could have brought someone in like, uh, I mean, Hulk could have brought someone in like um, Stevie Ray. Yeah, he eventually joined, of course. But yeah. yeah. Uh huh. How did you get that job in WCW? Did they recruit you? Did you reach out to them? Uh, with WCW? Yeah. No, no, Hulk gave me a call. He called you? Okay. Gave me a call. He said, Verge, how do you like to be, do a thing down here? We got called the New World Order. I said, I'm in, bro. I said, I'm in, Hulk. Say no more. He said, well, yeah, I'll say no more. He said, well, you you and Ted can come in both together, you mean? Because he said, right now, you got, like, Nash and Hall in, okay? Sure. And Ted, 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 came, Ted came in, and then I came in. I remember when uh, Hulk even showed us up there. It was like, I got this even on a picture, Nick. Mm-hmm. Uh, it shows... The six members and Bischoff is on the mic right here. Okay. He down on the mic and Hulk sure. on the mic holding it. And it was Nash, Eric Bischoff, Hall, Ted DiBiase in the upper left hand corner. I was in the center. All right. Benson and X Pac was right next to me. Nice. Yeah. So when you joined the NWO, the yeah. Godfather Charles Wright says he originally was offered your job, but you undercut him. I'm just going by what I've seen in interviews. Is that true, or what would you say to that? Um, I don't know about the undercut. You mean I didn't? Mm-hmm. I was still getting. You said Hulk called you personally, huh? Because you said Hulk Hogan called you personally. Yeah, he gave me a call and said, "Like, I want you to come on in." Okay, so there is some truth to it, but you didn't necessarily undercut him, or what's your no, version I, of the story? I, I came in there. I came in there. Me and Ted both came in together. Okay, so you didn't even know about Charles Wright? I didn't even know about that on that, man. You mean? Okay. Because my- I never heard about it until maybe like seven, eight years ago. Is that the first you heard about it, or did you ever get word of it in the 2000s? That's the first, that's first time I really heard about it, you mean? Uh, right. Like, like uh, uh, a Hulk gave Ted a call, and then he gave me a call. He yeah. said, I'm supposed to come on in. We're doing a thing called the NWO. Sign me up. Yep. I said, I'm in, bro. I said, I am in. You mean? Nice. And we rolled in that, man. We rolled in that. Like, me and Ted was already together, like, 
we did the whole million dollar man thing. Okay. Sure. I guess uh, I guess Hulk probably liked that. We did that whole in that million dollar man thing, and now we're money. Yeah, we came in and did you now the whole NWO thing. You mean for sure? So evidently, I did. did must have been doing something right. Oh, you did great. You were great at what you did. I, I wouldn't have called you the best bodyguard of all time if you were. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And everybody knew who you were for sure. They they knew you around the world. I mean, they they still know you, Mick. I mean, they you, 